Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, today, I'm just going to review how to fill out a form, and there's a reason for that. What we're trying to do here is I'm going to switch back. Um, what, what we're doing is I've, I've had a few questions about this, how to transfer uh, property and why uh, to avoid the percent sales tax or transfer tax or documentary stamp tax. So I'm going to just talk about that, but I want to uh, make a couple announcements. So um, I published the uh, series on the inner circle on the request for determination letter, uh, and you can uh, join the membership and select the, uh, the series. And we're going to do a live stream Q&A uh, Monday, the 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I also published the operating agreement and all the information on why I write them that way and the, most of those details, okay? And I have an aspect to the operating agreement that I've never published before, which is how to add an equity partner, okay? How to amend it and add someone else, not just amend the articles and add a member, but I'm talking about actually bringing in uh, another member or interested person and why you would do it and how you would do it and what kinds of terms you wanna have in there. So there's two different courses in the inner circle now. And then for the operating agreement, I'm gonna do a, a live stream Q and A on, I believe it's going to be in 24th on uh, that Thursday, so of next week. So we have Monday at 7 p.m. for the request for determination letter on the live Q and A, and then Thursday 7 p.m. I'm going to have a live Q and A on the opting agreement to take questions on that that subject. But for today, I just want to cover the uh, a very simple uh, form. I know it's not exciting, but it could save you a lot of money. Um, I've saved a lot of people a lot of money. This is just, um, um, it happens to be in New York. Um, they're very similar, California, Florida, New York. Those seem to be the places where you're gonna end up paying a huge amount of taxes. So I'm gonna switch back over there and let's go over that. You should see on your screen uh, my browser that has all the, the form uh, 584. See the, what I did was, so I was talking with someone yesterday on this, and so it took me about two or three minutes as we were speaking to find this form. And so now that we have the form for New York, if you wanted it, you can just, you know, search it on the internet. It's TP-584. Now there is one for New York City. I guess New York City likes to think of itself as a country. So um, the one for New York City, if you're not in New York City, if your property's not situated in New York City, you don't need that. Um, that one is TP-584-NYC as you can imagine. So this one applies to the whole state outside of New York City. And what we're doing here is we're conveying real estate, in this case, it was residential, to an LLC. Um, the LLC in this case was organized in New Mexico. So that shouldn't be a problem. I know some attorneys don't like that, but that's okay. So um, we did the conveyance and we're trying to, we're, he's doing it for the, the husband and wife are doing it for estate planning. They wanna take the property out of their name. Okay, just being, prudent. So this form tells the government that the beneficial interests don't change. So you got to be careful on this because when you convey the property and avoid the tax and you fill out this form, it looks to me like you don't pay any tax up front. And I don't think that's going to happen. You just fill out this form. This form I'm going to show you goes with your quit claim deed. And that gets filed with your county recorder's office, or in some places it's called the Bureau of Conveyances. Wherever they record judgment liens and wherever they record mortgages, that's where you record this document. It's the same place the deed was recorded when you took title to your house in the first place. So um, if you look down here, it's just this document here, okay, and you, your, your typical information, I guess they want your SSN. I don't see a problem with that, guys. It's not going to it's not going to create a tax liability. We're going to fill out this form and avoid a tax liability. So if you're the owner of the property, let's say you individually or you and a spouse, it would be individual, okay? And then you're going to convey it over to an LLC. So this is for two, yeah, okay. So this is the grand tour up here at the top, okay? This is the grand tour, whoever currently is on the title. So I'm talking about human beings. And then the grantee is going to be who is con being conveyed the property. So let's, in this case, we're talking about, it's going to be a single member LLC if the individual owner is a husband and wife in the first example, and they're going to convey the property to an LLC. They are going to be considered a single member LLC, even though there's two of them, but they're married. So it's sing single member. And you want to make sure that the owners of the title 
the way it is now before you convey it are the same owners of the LLC. Now, in this example that I was working on yesterday, the owner is a private membership association, but because the beneficial interests are the same, I, I explained, just go ahead and fill this out as if the PMA didn't exist and that'll be just fine. Um, if there's a question co that comes up from that, um, they'll get a letter or something and I'll, I'll respond to that, but it'll be fine. Um, so so that, if that answers your question, I anticipate uh, that's gonna be, what about if my LLC is owned by a PMA? Okay, just look through the PMA and understand who the beneficial interested parties are, who the beneficial owners are. So here, husband and wife conveying property to LLC. They still have the same interest as before. They didn't really sell it. We didn't add a person. A person didn't leave. It wasn't the result of a divorce or anything like that. So it's pretty simple. And then we fill the rest out. Now I'll just tell you a couple of details. So what this is gonna be is gonna look like this. This is what they call it in New York. It's a conveyance which consists of a mere change of identity or form of ownership organization or organization, okay? So this is what I've been saying for years. What we're doing is we're changing the way property appears in title. So we're changing the property rights. This will avoid liability. This will avoid you know, claims or attachments or things like that. Uh, and then down here, I think schedule B, I, there's some dollar amounts here. There's no, there's no tax rate. So this whole thing's exempt, right? So we just check that box. And then on C, I think we concluded that I don't think um, there was any selection we needed here. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but it's still the same. I mean, everything looks like F. So if we go down further, we'll see, I think it's what scheduled D. And then and on D, you would simply just enter the names of the parties that own the property in here individually. So husband, wife, print your name, sign your name, put the date. Uh, let me see here. There was another item that was F. Okay. So yeah, over here. Sorry. So this section right here on part three. So this is schedule B part three. So look, it's redundant. We already said this language, right? We already said that up here, but that's fine. Okay. That's what I would do in New York. So just, you know, even I, I do this all the time. I just, I'm very careful. It so it took me like two minutes to find this and it took me like 20 minutes to make sure I get it right <laughs> to fill this out. So it's okay if you do that. So every state's about the same. You can usually Google it. Um, I hate to use Google, I use other search engines. But uh, if not, you can always go uh, to the recorder's office and get the form. If there's no form, you can include a statement with your quit claim deed. This information does not go on the quit claim deed. Okay, it has to be an ad advice to the county recorder's office. So I know some of you will ask the question, what if I'm using a trust? So let's be clear, this is a trust, an actual, trust document where the name of the trust is whatever name it is, trust, okay? The designation is trust, okay? It's not an LLC. It's either an LLC or it's a trust. So if it's a trust, um, the beneficial interest would be expressed in the declaration of trust. And again, I don't think anyone's gonna ask what that is. The trust can be called anything, but the beneficiaries technically should be the same as the title holders. So you go from being the title holder to the beneficiary of a trust. And the trust then becomes the title holder of the property, the new title holder. That's the way it should work. And PMAs, don't use a PMA for this. The PMA, in my opinion, the purpose of it is to be private in the background, own the LLC and, and, and keep it like that. All right, so that's, that's the simple version of it. Uh, I know that's not very exciting stuff, but I think it will help a lot of people. I love showing this to people because you're looking at, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of taxes and uh, love, love to avoid that stuff. So um, is, does anybody have any questions? I can uh, look here. All right. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not going to do another call next week. Again, there is the... Um, the call we're doing, it's a live Q&A. Please join that one, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, if, if you're into this, right? It's not the most interesting thing in the world, but if you wanna know why I write the operating agreement the way I do and the components of it, and, and so that you can understand how to do things yourself and also how to add a person. Let's say someone comes to your LLC and, and puts down $100,000 and wants to get involved with you. Well, there's a way to do that. There's a way to document that in your, in your operating agreement. And remember the operating agreement is private. And so we get into all that, that will be, uh, 
the 24th, okay, March 24th, that's coming this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. live Q&A. And then uh, at Monday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to talk about the determination letter and answer all the questions about that live stream Q&A. All right. So that's all I have for today. I appreciate everyone watching. Have a good day, y'all.